What is up YouTube, I am Galadit74 here, bringing you guys week 9 of the APM. This week we are taking on Venus, totally butchered that, coach of the Alaskan Articunos. We are going into this game with a 3-5 and five record, while my opponent is going into this game with a 5-3 and three record. To recap what happened last week in the APM for you guys, we did lose the Slick Panther in a pretty close game overall. In a nutshell, we basically chose our, the wrong win con in the end, and I set my priorities in the wrong way, and it was going to cost us the game. But it was still a really good game regardless, and I highly recommend you go check that out, which is going to be in the APM playlist. I hope you all are also enjoying your dose of competitive content since the coronavirus has essentially Thanos snapped everything else in existence. So I hope you guys enjoy my content at least. Looking at the playoff race as we are approaching the end of the season, we are worse than every other team in the other division. There's two divisions in this conference. And even though we are second place in my division, and if we win this game, we will hold that down pretty nicely, which does essentially give us a playoff spot. We're technically like six best in the whole conference, which isn't that great. But, you know, we're going to take the way the playoff system is written up, and we're going to take those. In regards to our matchup, it's kind of bad, not because the matchup itself is bad, just because I really like my opponent's team a lot. He's got a really busted team, one of the best in the league in my opinion, and it's going to be really hard to combat what he has on there. With all that being said, we are going to head into the team builder. This week we are going up against a Hoopa Unbound, a Necrozma, a Kamo'o, Gengar, a Lola Ninetales, a Klefki, Shaman, Heliolisk, a Loma Mola, Palisand, Moltres, and Carping that can Dynamax. Now expect him to bring consist of Hoopa Unbound, Necrozma, Kamo'o, Gengar, Klefki, and Shaman. There are a few different things my opponent could bring. Palisand is an okay bring against my team, though it does give a few of my mods some offensive opportunities. Moltres, because a lot of people like to bring their fire types against me, like Fire Flying, like Charizard came when Beardy was there. So I wouldn't be too shocked if Moltres is also a bring to maybe stop Superior. Ninetales, if he wants Veil, and... He sort of kind of it to be honest i don't really see anything else coming aloma mola does stop my cloister but otherwise i don't think it's that good in this matchup now things i expect on this team i did mention the six that i think i wouldn't really be shocked if he brought dual scarf this week on the hoopa and the gengar gengar makes sure that none of my offense really starts sweeping against his team and hoopa can he just can use scarf hoopa to just break because hoopa is so damn strong to the point where i just don't have many switch ins and if you give it a scarf i have a hard time offensively beating it too uh, he could bring bulky Kamo to make sure my Blissephalon doesn't get out of hand. Uh, Necrozma could be set up late game because that is a really good setup threat against my team. And once it's set up, that could just basically sweep my team. And then finally, Klefki is there because Thunder Wave Klefki is really annoying for me. I can kill it pretty easily with stuff like the Blissephalon, uh, the Magnazone, Gliscor, all kind of like dealing with Klefki. It's just Thunder Wave is really annoying for a decent member amount of members on my team. I also mentioned Shaman because I don't actually, I'm not bringing Gudra this week, so a Shaman switching doesn't really exist on my team. And that is a really quick rundown of my opponent's team this week. Luckily, Superior does look really good with a little bit of support. I can clean up his team with Superior rather easily, as long as that Gengar isn't Scarf or if it's gone out of the way. And also, another one that looks really good in this matchup is Archeops. Archeops with its combination of rock and flying coverage and U-turn is really good against him and hopefully he won't be expecting that in this matchup. But that is it for my opponent's team. What I am bringing it this week consists of Magnezone, Blacephalon, Archeops, Superior, Gliscor, and Malamar. First up on the team this week is going to be Magnazone. Magnazone is holding the Assault Vest with Magna Pool this week. A lot of wacky EV investment that you guys can read off there. Moves being Volt Twitch, Thunderbolt, a Flash Cannon, and Hidden Power Ground. I don't remember exactly what all those EVs were for, so don't ask. Uh, Magnazone is here for two things, and one of them is really important. Trap Klefki and dispose of it, and then wall the Aloma Mola and Alola Night Tails. Those, that is Magnezone Jadab, the two biggest things there. Magnezone does help me out with stuff like the Carbink and the Gengar as well to an extent, but otherwise Magnezone is definitely here for those things. I need Superior to be really good late game, and if Klefki is gone, it makes my life a hell of a lot easier, because Superior cannot really touch Klefki too much, and Thunder Wave completely cripples my Superior, so if I can get rid of the Klefki, it's going to be good. If he shut shell, it'll be a little bit annoying, but I'm gonna, I'll find out pretty quickly. A Skull does like 10% to like Magnezone, it's absolutely insane, and I can gain momentum off of a Loma Mola with Volt Switch, so that's why Magnezone can also switch into that. And then finally, I know if Ninetales comes, it's going to be Aurora Veil, and I don't have a way to get rid of it with my Magnezone, but at least Magnezone can like gain momentum on Ninetales or just straight up kill it if I need to, because Magnezone's typing is just so good against it. 
And it has lots of a few other things like Stop Gengar from Sludge Wave spamming me, Necrozma from Photon Geyser spamming me too, and that's sort of the main gist of Magnazone this week. It's pretty important still. Next up is going to be Blacephalon. Blacephalon is holding the Choice Scarf with the uh, Max Special Attack and Modest Nature, who's being a Flamethrower, a Shadow Ball, a Psychic, and Hidden Power Bug. Uh, I have Hidden Power Bug for Hoopa because I think it's a threat. His Hoopa and Necrozma, his top two mods are both weak to bug types, and I have a Heracross sitting right there, and I did not bring it this week. Not sure what is going on in my head right now, but let's hopefully this, this set works anyway. Uh, Scarf of Felic was really good because there's three mods just faster than Blacephalon, being the Heliolisk, Ninetales, and Gengar, all of which that Blacephalon can deal with offensively pretty well if I am Scarf. So I can outspeed all those unless he does bring Scarf Gengar, which could come. I'm not wouldn't be completely shocked if he brought that. But otherwise, Blacephalon can beat stuff like the Gengar, the Ninetales, Shaman, Klefki, Heliolus. It, the list just goes on and on. Yes, he can switch into stuff like Aloma Mola, Spadef Moltres, and I think Kamo'o what he'll bring this week. A really Spadef Kamo'o with Bulletproof. But it does take a Psychic Prediction to do that. And if I hit it with a Psychic, then it's going to be a fun time for me. Because Kamo'o does not get reliable recovery. So Blacephalon might have a fun time this matchup, just depending on what he brings. But I I'm excited to use it again. Third up is going to be our interesting mod of the week, and I'm really excited to use this. It is Archeops. Uh, this is Max Speed Jolly with Max Attack with Stealth Rock, Stone Edge, Acrobatics, and U-Turn. I didn't want to run Rocks on Glass Score, so I put it on Archeops this week. And this is here just to just early game break through his team. U-Turn kills Hoopa. Acrobatics destroys Kamo'o uh, and Gengar as well. I can run through his team with this uh, Archeops as long as he doesn't like cripple me with you know Defeatus because Defeatus is a really bad ability. I can find out if he's Scarf that way and I can just U-Turn out and kind of just save Archeops to sack later. And if I do lead with this thing, which is a thought in my head, I can bluff that I'm like Sash Rocks so he won't want to attack me if he like leads off with a Scarf Hoopa because I can just still U-Turn and nuke that thing even with Defeatus. So I can just get some really early damage early on. If you bring stuff like the Alomola, Klefki, or Palisand, I am going to have to U-turn out on the two of those, and the Klefki I'll just have to hard switch out. But I feel like Orkiefs has a lot of good potential in this game overall, and I felt like it would be a nice worthy bring. Fourth up is our win con of the week. We have Superior. Superior is holding the leftovers with a mix of Spatak and HP, who's being Leaf Storm, Dragon Pulse, Hin Power Rock, and Substitute. Hint Power Rock is for the Moltres, it's going to catch that thing off guard. Leaf Storm is stupid spammable against my opponent once Klefki is gone, and Dragon Pulse is there to hit the coverage for Kamo'o. There's not much else to say about this thing, it is enough speed to outspeed everything that isn't Scarf. Again, I have to find out what is Scarf, but I should be able to do that just throughout the course of the battle, because Superior really only comes out late game. Uh, Leaf Storm, I think I need Rocks up to like basically kill everything at plus 2, and if I'm at plus 4, I should kill everything that I should be killing late game. And that's going to be really important for this superior at the end. And I get a free sub up on a Loma Mola every time, which is absolutely fantastic if that thing wants to come. And that is superior, really important, even though I base barely went over it. Fifth is Gliscor. Gliscor is holding the Toxic Orb as always. It moves being Earthquake, Toxic, Defog, and Roost with a lot of speed. This is here to switch into stuff like Klefki if Magnezone's not around, Kamo'o if it's defensive, like I think it will be, Gengar, though I do have to be careful if it's Specs, because I can't really switch into that, uh, Palisan, Moltres, Carbink, because Carbink can have Earth Power, or Max uh, Quake in this situation, and nuke my Magnezone, don't want that happening, and then Hoopa, even though if Hoopa's banded, I also can't really switch into that, or it just clicks Ice Punch. I have to be very careful with the score. just like every other week I have to be careful of ice coverage which my opponent does have in the form of hidden power, ice punch, nine tails, definitely have to watch out for that. But this is here, I needed something to defog stuff like Aurora Veilway or rocks or even spike stack on Klefki if it decides to come, which I expect that to be a thing. And that's Glasscore's role this week. And then finally we have Malamar. Malamar is holding leftovers with a bunch of EVs, who's being a superpower, a psycho cut, knockoff, and topsy turvy. Topsy Turvy is there for the Kamo and the Necrozma particularly. I don't think Necrozma is going to have the Signal Beam or x or whatever set my opponent decides to bring. And I can Topsy Turvy the boost and then start boosting up myself. I thought that'd be pretty useful. And another thing that was pretty useful is Knock Off. My opponent does not like losing their items, so knocking off something on my opponent's side might be really helpful for me in the late game. And that is Malamar's job in a nutshell, to switch into a few mods and make sure they don't sweep me, and just to knock off items. And that is going to be my team in a nutshell. That team builder did run kind of long, I think. Eh, it's not crazy long. But I'm really excited to use this team, especially Archeops. I really think Archeops is going to put a lot of work in this game, guys. 
and superior late game, hopefully it can sweep. But without further ado, we're going to head over to Pokemon Showdown and we're going to watch the battle. Alright, we have arrived at Pokemon Showdown, and my opponent did not bring the Hoopa or the Kamo'o. That blows my mind. I have a lot less stress on my shoulders now. He did bring the Moltres and the Palisan, so I do have to look out for those Mons. In regards to lead, I'm going to lead off with Archaeops. I know Palisan is a thing, but I can U-turn out on that, so I'm not really too scared of it. Also, in this matchup, looking at Blacephalon, it, it looks really good late game Shadow Ball Spam because he's got three of his members weak to it, and Klefki and Ninetales don't like Blacephalon either. So keep that in mind. He leads off with Ninetales as he switches out in Palisand. I wasn't going to mess with Ninetales turn 1 in Veil, so I was just hoping he would let me kill it as I maybe predicted me to go for rocks. But I don't, I just Stone Edge and now I can U-turn out on the Palisand. This is the freest Toxigorp of my life as the opponent just throws up rocks. That is fine because I do have the Defog on the Gliscor and that is its job this week to get rid of rocks. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to click Defog this turn as the Ninetales comes back out. That's fine, uh, this is a really like short terms of events that's going on right now. I do get my Toxic Orb and I'm back to full. Now he has his Ninetales in as I'm going to go out into the Magnazone as he sets up the Roar Veil. So I'm like, okay, here we go. We're going to have to deal with this now. Uh, I'm going to Volt Switch out instead of Flash Cannon because I'm expecting him to switch out as he does. He's going on, he goes on the Pal Sand. That's fine. I have an easy switch into this thing every time in Gliscor and his Sawing turns out on Veil. So this turn I'm going to go right back out into Gliscor and repeat the process over again as he is pretty adamant of putting these rocks up and that is fine because now I can not only defog his rocks away, I can defog the Veil too. As he brings out the Necrozma right here, uh, this Necrozma and Gengar are the two scariest things on my opponent's side so I'm going to throw off a Toxic as he actually pulls a double into the Moltres and I miss my Toxic and that's a little bit annoying. I'm a fast Gliscor so I kind of expect to outspeed this thing as I do. So that's good, I put this Moltres on the timer at least. He crits me with the U-turn, which it doesn't matter at all. And he goes back out into Ninetales and we're doing this process over again. I feel like I am in a winning position just because I have put the Moltres on the timer and I feel like I have more momentum on my side. I can go back out into the Magnazone as he just goes for Freeze Dry. It does nothing to my Magnazone. Luckily I don't get frozen there, that would have been kind of devastating to be honest. As now he goes out into Klefki, I was like, okay, that kind of shocks me. I click Flash Cannon this time, I do a decent chunk to this thing, and we're going to, we're going to take Hail Damage, right? But Klefki gains Leftovers, and that is really big because that means that this Klefki is not Shed Shell. This Klefki is trapped in here with me, so I'm realizing at this point, he's just going to sack this Klefki to get up Spikes. And I'm going to kill this thing off a of T-Bolt the next turn. And that's fine. He's going to get two layers of spikes up. But I still have Gliscor pretty healthy up. And I can just defog them away a little bit later. As this Klefki is going to drop. So th turn 13 we get our first kill of the game. And it is a big one. Because I want a Klefki out of the way early. Superior looks good now. Blacephalon doesn't have to worry about getting paralyzed. And that's good. I'm going on the Gliscor. I know I can live any one hit. As I find out this Gengar is hella specs. And I knew I could live the specs hit. That's why I made that play originally. Uh, but I do want to keep my glass score because I want to defog these things away at some point So I'm actually gonna to have to sack them on here. It's gonna be the Malamar uh, I didn't really want to get rid of anything else on my team like, Archaeops is still good as like a switch into Moltres later on in the game if I need it So Malamar wasn't doing too much in this game knocking off items would have been nice, but I'm gonna to have to deal without it So this thing's down luckily I know my Blacephalon is faster than this thing as well as my superior so I'm going to go into Blacephalon and pressure this Gengar, and I'm, as I'm just going to fire for free Shadow Ball. It's really free, it's going to do a lot of damage to anything. As Moltres comes out and takes 46%, I'm like, okay, this thing's not the bulkiest thing in the world, but it's got some bulk in it. And I'm going to switch out into Archaeops. I do this because I know Moltres can't kill me with any one hit, but even if I did get the kill on Moltres, a plus one Shadow Ball never knocks out a Ninetales, even an offensive one, so I wasn't going to be sweeping from that position regardless. Uh, so I'm going to go U-turn out on the Palisand. I'm going on the Gliscor because I guaranteed live a Shadow Ball every single time if he's not invested. As I do live the Shadow Ball, you see. And this is great because I am faster than the Palisand. I am happily willing to sack my Gliscor to defog these spikes away from my opponent's side. As they pull a switch and go out on the Ninetales. So this is great. These spikes are going to be officially gone for the rest of the battle because Cluffy is gone. And now Ninetales is in. Gliscor isn't doing too much now. I do click, uh, I do kind of stay in and play some mind games with my opponent as they go for Veil as I click Defog to get rid of the Veil. But I realize that Gliscor could still be somewhat useful in this game as I am getting a little bit more health back. So I'm just going to go down to Magnazone. I have a good switch into this thing anyway, so why not? Like, why waste my Gliscor? As he does click Veil again. And now I'm looking at my Calc, and Flash Cannon shouldn't kill this thing if he is bulky. 
and I'm assuming he is a bulky nine tail, so I'm just gonna click flash cannon as I just nuked the, the hell out of this thing. I kind of wanted this to live, so I probably could have clicked Thunderbolt just to stall out Aurora Veil turns. So now he has six turns to work with. As he goes out into Necrozma, I'm like, all right, this is set up Necrozma. As he clicks Dragon Dance, and that is really scary because uh, my Glide score is really low and my Malamar is dead. As I Volt Switch out, I do 20%, and I'm looking at it, I'm like, okay, Superior can live any one hit from this thing guaranteed. So I'm gonna go out into this thing and try and set up a sub and sort of waste Veil turns as um, the hell's over as he has x scissor so losing malamar earlier actually didn't matter because he has x scissor here and at this point i'm looking at it i'm like all he has to do is set up another dragon dance and win because my blissephalon is still faster than this necrozma but he doesn't well he knows that at this point because i'm scarf but if he sets up one more dd he should be faster so at this point he's got three turns of veil and i have four mons left so i'm gonna have to sack everything but blissephalon and i'm gonna have to hope shadow ball can kill this thing without veil because veil will be gone at this point I go on the line just to kind of like the bluff that I could possibly like kill him even though I can't because Veil's up just so he doesn't set up a DD. I, I see if he sets up a DD on anything I basically lose the game at this point just hoping he doesn't do that and I have one more turn left to kill. I'm gonna go into Magna Zone. I'm gonna Volt out just in case he has nothing for me as he kills me with Earthquake and this is gonna come down to it. He never set up a DD. Shadow Ball is a roll. It's, it's on my calc it was going to be a roll heavily in my favor as I click Shadow Ball and I knock out the Necrozma. And that was huge. It turned out the roll was like 60-40, maybe a little bit like 65-35 in my favor. So we are going to take those. And because this Gengar is not Scarf and I'm faster than anything, this Blacephalon is going to clean up the game. And after Necrozma nearly swept my team, Blacephalon came in and finished the job and is going to pick up four kills in this endgame as it's going to blow past everything remaining on my opponent's side. And your Northside Noiverns are going to win this really close game 1-0 with Blacephalon carrying the team at the end. So Moltres is going to go down, and that is going to be the game. So GG to my opponent, Vimnus. This game, especially by the end, was definitely a hell of a ride of emotions. It was definitely a mental game at the end, at least I think it was, in regards to whether my opponent would set up another Dragon Dance or not. My opponent talked about it not too much, just a little bit after the battle, and we had the same kind of thought process at the end. Uh, but Blissaflon is definitely showing its worth there, and it has now at 9 or 10 kills on the season. I have it as 10, and the Doc has it as 9. I'm not sure. I'll recount them later. But I'm glad Blacephalon put in some work here. I'm a little bit disappointed that Archeops didn't do too much, but it is kind of hard for the Palisand running around. But maybe we'll bring it one more time. We still have three more games in the season. GG again to my opponent of Amuse. Thank you for the battle. Again, probably butchering that, and I apologize. We are going to move up to a 4-5 and five record with minus 12 differential. Yes, we have bad differential because we're bad. Uh, we are still six in this conference, which isn't that great, but we are second in the division a little bit more comfortably now, and that still kind of gets us a playoff spot. So as long as we can keep this position and, you know, win more, hopefully, we will be good to go for playoffs, and hopefully we can keep this momentum. Next week, we face off against Great Warrior. He was the Season 1 champion of the APM, so that's pretty exciting. We have fought him before in the last APM season in one of my favorite battles ever, and we did just manage to win in that game based on a damage roll. He has a Dragapult, and we're going to have to prep for that. That will be next week's video. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure you guys stay safe, drink water, and just prioritize your health in these weird times we have right now in the world. But again, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like. If you like Pokemon Draft League content, consider subscribing to the channel. I'm going to head out of here. Have a fantastic day, YouTube.